All right, so today we're gonna to be discussing business planning uh, for social media for 2021. All right, so why is social media so important and why do you need a business plan? I'm gonna go into that first. Sorry, I just need to admit someone. So like I was saying, why is social media important, right? So think about it, people are spending at least four hours a day on social media every single day. So you wanna be in front of where people are. So if people are spending at least four hours a day on social media platforms, you need to be marketing to them there on social media where they're at. Also, social media marketing is free, right? Having these accounts are free. You don't have to pay for them. And in the past, whenever we needed to market, we had to spend a lot of money before the internet, right? And so you want to take advantage of, of it. Sorry, this one person keeps on trying to get in. Hold on. Okay, it looks like they got in now. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this, that way it doesn't interfere anymore. Okay, like I said, um, it's really important because again, you're gonna, that's where people are, it's free, so why not take advantage of it? It's also a great way to grow your brand awareness. Also, it's a great way to prospect in you know the new age using social media to prospect is the new way of doing it instead of cold calling or door knocking i'm not saying don't do those things you should do whatever works for you um but what i am saying is with social media you now have the option to connect with people online uh potential prospects and that sort of thing so you should definitely take advantage of it of it for that as well um, it's a great way to build client loyalty. So I actually read an article that was saying 53% of clients who follow you on social media are likely to be loyal to you and refer you to other people. So it is really important that you have, you know, your clients and your people on your social media platforms and constantly looking at you and seeing what you're doing and that they're going to be reminded to use you if they're, if you're always in front of them, right? Also, social media is pretty much like a free CRM. If you really think about it, that's what it is because you're able to actually call, text, FaceTime anyone on social media. So you have access to people and reach out to people whenever you like. So in your DM section, you have the option to send you know, messages, to send, to actually do phone calls and you can do all of that. So take advantage of that. It really is like a free CRM. Um, and again, plenty of agents sell tons of homes from social media alone, right? And if you really think about it, there are deals in your friend list right now. Are you going to be the one taking advantage of those deals? Because someone is, right? So why not it be you, right? So this is why social media is important. So let's go over what we're going to be discussing today. So today I'm going to go over which platforms you want to be using. I'm also going to be discussing what kind of content you should be posting. Sorry, a few people are trying to get in. Quite a bit of people, sorry. All right, so I'm gonna go over what kind of content you should be posting to get results, how to schedule so social media marketing into your busy schedule, because as realtors, we're all really busy and uh, we need to fit it into the day somehow, right? So we're gonna go over how you're gonna do that, uh, your daily operations to get results, and then tips on how to be consistent on social media, because that is the most important thing to be consistent, but it's also the hardest. So I'm going to go over how you can do that. So let's get right into it. So first, we're going to talk about the platforms that you should be using. I say, you know, do as many as you can. The more that you can manage, the more you should do. Um, but again, you know, I know that not everyone can be on all the social media platforms. We don't all have time for it, right? Um, so I'm going to go over a few of the different platforms and what categories they fall into. You might not understand what that means, but I'll explain it. So there is organic reach platforms, and then there's the non-organic reach platforms. So we're going to go over uh, the non-organic ones first. Those are Facebook and Instagram. So what does that mean? What is non-organic reach? It basically means these platforms have been around for a long time. And if you actually think about it, Facebook owns Instagram, right? So these platforms, because they've been around for so long, there is so much content in it. There's so many people in it constantly putting out content. And when something has been around for a long time, there's lots of content, they have to be very 
um, strategic with what if what kind of content they show to people. So the way that the algorithm works on both Facebook and Instagram is once you make a post, it doesn't go to all of your followers. A lot of people think that all their followers are going to see their post. That's not how it works. So the way that it works is it's going to be shown to a very small percentage. And during when you first post it, whether or not that post gets interactions, meaning likes, comments, shares, um, saves, that's going to determine whether or not they're going to send that post to the next round of people. So it's going to get to the next percentage of people and it keeps going down, down, down. So it is really important that your posts do well as soon as you post it for it to be seen by more and more people. Okay. So the reason why I put these into these categories is the non-organic reach places, which means it's harder to grow is Facebook and Instagram. Whereas the organic reach places are LinkedIn and TikTok. And why are those um, organic? Because they're newer, like LinkedIn isn't new, but the popularity of LinkedIn is newer. Whereas TikTok is a newer platform. So whenever there is less content in a platform, they're going to put it out to more people. So it's going to see like the algorithm works for you. You're basically going to be able to see more uh, of like more people are going to see your content. Um, I put IG reels in organic in the organic uh, reach column. The reason for that is because Instagram is pushing out organic reels right now. Whenever there is a new feature, you always want to be using it because the platform is going to be pushing out that content to more and more people. So do take advantage. If you're on Instagram, use IG reels. Then the third category is search based platforms. That would be a blog. If you have a blog, it would be YouTube. It'd be Pinterest. So what does that mean? That means that people are going to those places to search for, for, for specific things, right? So on YouTube or when you're on Google, you're specifically putting how to dot, dot, dot. And so what that means is you can actually really grow on those platforms if you do, um, if you do it really right. And what I mean is when you search for something, uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be searchable all the time. And so when you post something on YouTube, you might not get a lot of views, but down the road, you might get tons of views because it's something that people keep on searching, right? So it's a, it's, these are the platforms that they're evergreen. They're constantly gonna get more and more views and more and more popular as time goes on, okay? So those are the three different categories. And my tip for you guys, cause you're thinking, which platform should I do? is pick the platform that you're going to enjoy using and the one that you use the most right now. Because the reason why I say that is because you need to be consistent on it. And if you're doing, if you're picking a platform that you already know that you're already enjoy using, you're going to be the most consistent on that platform. It truly doesn't matter which one you go to, just make sure that you're consistent and that you're constantly putting out content on that platform. Okay. So these are all your options. Um, of course, the more that you can do, the better, but I'm just letting you know, you don't necessarily need to do everything. If you're starting out, I actually recommend that you would just focus on one and put your energy all into one platform. Okay. So now we're going to go into content that gets results. I go by the 80, 20 rule. Okay. What does that mean? That means 80% of content should be about your personality. It should be about your personal life and 20% should be about your business, real estate, right? So personal content, why is there so much personal content versus real estate content? The reason is because people, this is a way for you to build rapport with people. People work with other people that they know, like, and trust the best way for them to get to know you is by you actually putting out that content out into social media, right? So uh, just so you know, this is not just my opinion. A lot of people who use social media and get results are posting about themselves. They don't just post, like when you see uh, pages that are just houses and you don't ever see the person's face and you know those pages are not the typically the pages that are getting a lot of um, basically attracting a lot of clients through social media. It's pages where you're actually seeing a person's real life and learning about them as a person. Okay. So again, this isn't just my opinion. Um, there's an example. So Gary V, I know a lot of you probably know who Gary V is. He's really known with social media. 
He actually does an event for real estate agents called Agent 2021. And one of the panelists, he is a real estate agent who gets tons of real, uh, you know, tons of business through social media. He actually recommended for every five pictures that you post, only one should be about real estate, about your business. The other four should be all about you and your interests and your personality. So you want to be showing more about you than you do about your business, okay? We're gonna move on, just admitting someone else. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples of some things that you should be posting. So for the 20%, which is the real estate side, here are some examples of some things. So there's listings, there's solds, uh, monthly market reports, people love that, uh, client testimonials, and I honestly would prefer that people do the video format of test client testimonials. I know it's harder to get, but it, it does work better. Honestly, anytime that you use video, it's always going to be better. Because even when you think about it, like when you see, when you scroll through social media and you just see posts with a whole bunch of writing on it and this long testimonial, you're not reading it. People do not read it. They just skim right through it. If there was a video of someone saying, you know, I love this person, they, you know, sold my home, blah, 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 they would actually sit to watch and listen, right? So video is always going to do better. So that's just a little tip for you guys. Um, show your achievements. You want to show, you know, if you've won any awards, if you've been on the cover of a magazine, those are the type of things that you want to be posting because it, br it brings credibility. Also, uh, post on your IG stories or Facebook stories. Do a lot of behind the scenes so you could show, you know, open houses, you can show your showings, that sort of thing. And I wanted to give you guys a growth hack, a growth hack tip right now, which is collaborations. Collaborations is the most important and fastest way to grow on social media. So the best way to do that with real estate is to collaborate with other realtors. If they're an influencer, even better, right? The more, you know, following or influence a person has, the more it's going to help you as well, right? Um, you can also collaborate with local businesses. And I would suggest using like an IG live because with IG lives, what's really cool about it is that when you collaborate with someone, all of their followers get notified of the live, not just yours. So now all of their followers are being brought onto your page. And through that, you can actually gain a lot of new followers because they're going to, if they like you, and if you're giving value on the live, they're going to be like, oh, I really like this girl. Let me go check her out. They're going to go on your page. And as long as your page looks good and looks like something of value, they're going to follow you, right? So that's a really big growth hack that is super important and you guys should definitely be taking advantage of. Now, personal. So 80% is going to be all about you. Now, the way that you want to go about this is pick four pillars of content for this category. So what that means is what are your top four interests? Okay. And examples of that could be dogs. It could be traveling. It could be, I'm a foodie. It could be, I'm into fitness. I'm into fashion, whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter what your interests are. The, the more uh, niche it is, the better. Okay. So just pick four different categories and start posting about those things. Show your personality, right? Show your face, be your authentic self, because the more that you are your authentic self, the more people are going to relate to you. You're, they're going to feel your genuineness and your realness. And they're going to be like, I want to work with that person. I want to be on that person's team or whatever it is. Okay. So definitely make sure that you're showing your face, do more video content. It is literally the next best thing to meeting someone in person is to see them in video, right? You really feel like you know them before you even get to see them. So make sure that you're doing more video content. It's super important. So the next part is going to be about working harder and not smart. I mean, sorry, <laughs> working smarter and not harder. Okay. So the best way to do that is to like the best way to save time is going to be to batch content. So I'm not sure if you guys know what that means, but what you're going to do is pick one day a week where you're going to, you know, dedicate to social media and you're going to actually prepare. You're going to shoot, which is either, you know, photos or film or whatever you're doing. And then you're going to schedule all your posts all in that one day. So instead of working, every single day on social media, you know, creating content, posting it and all that, uh, you know, the thinking process that goes into it. Instead of doing that every single day, you can actually leave it to one day a week. 
that is working smarter and not harder. And it's going to save you ton, a ton, a ton of time. So that's what I would suggest you guys do. Also, um, you can use this app. I, this is the one that I use. I really like it for Instagram. It's called Preview. And basically, it allows you to plan out your content ahead of time. So what, why the feed is so important. So basically, sorry, what that preview app does, it allows you to like prepare what your feed is going to look like. And you can move it around to make it look good and everything. And that way, you know what it's going to look like. And you can uh, schedule each post. And then that way, it comes out looking how you want the feed to look. Why is it important that the feed looks good? on social media, especially Instagram, when people go on your page, there's two things that they look at before they decide if they want to follow your page or not. The number one is your bio and also your profile picture, but I feel like that's part of the bio. So the bio, and then the second part is your feed. If your feed looks like really good and it looks like high quality content, high quality photos um, and all of that, they're going, most than likely, they're going to follow you. You're gonna follow your page. That's why it's important. Also, uh, for scheduling, you want to schedule your post using Creator Studio for Facebook and both is Instagram. That's free. So a lot of these um, apps that do like scheduling posts and stuff, you have to pay for them. They're usually not free. But Facebook and Instagram, you can actually do that online through Creator Studio and it's free. So definitely take advantage of that and use that. For YouTube, there is an actual scheduling option in the studio, so you can use that, that's free as well. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Like I'm gonna actually record a short video and it's gonna show you exactly how to post. Um, but my tip before we get onto that is just make sure that you're spending your time wisely when you're on social media, okay? So there's a lot of people who are like, I can't do this because I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time for social media. I don't have time for content. I just gave you a tip, which is batch content. That's going to save you a ton of time. So there's no excuses why you can't do it. And honestly, people, a lot of people who say they don't have the time, a lot of times they're the ones who are on social media just scrolling for entertainment. So if you're going to be on there, why be on there and not take advantage of what it can do for your business instead of just being on there, just consuming, right? So ask yourself, are you a consumer or you're a creator of content, right? Whenever you go on social media. And that will make sure that you're being really productive with your time. All right, here's an example of what a weekly feed can look like for you guys using the preview app. So this is just an example that I made up. Um, at the top, I actually circled the different uh, posts that are for real estate, okay? And then at the bottom, I circled the ones that are personal, right? So it's showing fashion, it's showing travel, it's showing fitness, it's showing I read books, that sort of thing. At the top, you see the market report, you see, you know, a sold and that sort of thing. So it's just to give you an idea of what the feed should look like and the the 80 20 rule, what that looks like on a weekly basis. Right. And this is using the preview app, by the way. So this is the video of the tutorial that I was talking about. This is going to show you exactly how to schedule your post. This is going to save you a ton of time because all you have to do is schedule it and then it's going to post on its own for you, okay? So I'm just gonna play that video for you guys. Here is the Facebook tab, and then there's the Instagram tab right next to it. To schedule a post, you wanna first click on create a post, and then click on your actual page that you're gonna be using. Write in the caption Papa? first, so you can write everything Papa. up first. After you've finished writing in the caption, put in your location if you like. It's always a good idea to add your location. And then you want to actually post the picture. So click on there and you can actually take the picture. I'm using my phone, so I'm taking it from my phone. Camera roll. Pick on the picture. You can edit it if you want, like crop it and that sort of thing if you'd like on here directly so do whatever you need to do then press done and they are some advanced settings if you want to use them so it like allows you to turn off comments you can take business partners there's just like extra features i can't go into it all now um, but once you've done the basic things click schedule at the bottom uh, for publish sorry and then you're going to hit schedule and here you can actually pick the date and you can pick the time that you want it to schedule and it will post on its own.
So right now we schedule it. I just shows here all the details showing that it's been scheduled for what time and date. And then if you want, what's really cool, you can actually click on calendar underneath posts and actually see all of the things that you have saved and coming up for the for that month. For YouTube, we can use the YouTube Studio app, which is easy. Click on a video that you want to schedule. So click on videos and a video right now that I have unlisted. We'll use that as an example. So you just click on the video, click edit, and then you can click on the unlist part and change it to scheduled. So you can schedule the post and you can pick the date. So just pick any date, press OK. You can also adjust the time. So you can pick any time that you want, press OK. And then once you have picked your date and time, it is going to automatically schedule this video for you. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. So right now, as you can see, it's now scheduled. So it will post during that time. All right. So I just wanted to quickly show you guys because maybe a lot of you haven't ever scheduled a post before. So that's just how you would do it for Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Those are all the ways that you can do it. So like I was talking about, content is super important. You want high quality content. Content is king, but engagement is queen, okay? If you want to grow and if you want to get more clients and attract more people, you need to engage on social media. It is called social media for a purpose. It's to be social. It's to actually get to know people, build relationships, right? So here are some rules of engagement. Engagement should be happening every single day. You want to put at least 30 minutes a day aside for engaging with your followers, um, with prospective clients and that sort of thing. Okay. You want to reply to all of your comments and your DMs as a minimum. So that's, if that's the one thing you're going to do, you have to at least do that. It is super important because you never know if you're not checking your DMs, you never know what you're missing, but also in your comment section, if people seeing that you're not even replying, it comes off as rude and people are not gonna continue to comment on your stuff and continue to follow you a lot of times. So um, make sure that you're at least replying and commenting back. A tip is to check your hidden DMs. Not everybody knows this, but there are DMs that are hidden. Some people do, some people don't. So I just wanted to quickly bring that up. In Instagram, it's the little section at the top hand corner that says requests. So what that means is those are all the DMs from people that you're not following um, or they're not following you, but they've messaged you. So you want to make sure that you're checking up on that all the time because you never know. You could be, you know, there could be a client, potential client, you know, buyer, seller or something in there. So make sure that you're always checking those. On Facebook, it's the same thing. You go under settings and it's message requests. So those are people that you're not following and you're not following them, but they've messaged you. So check those all the time. Um, on social media, you wanna be replying to messages as quickly as possible within five minutes minimum, because anytime it's a lead online, you don't have a lot of time. There's a very small window open for you to actually capture that lead. So make sure that you respond really quickly. Um, for prospecting online. So some of you might be interested in, you know, prospecting or growing your page and how do I do that through engagement? So the method that I like to use, is called the three, two, one method. So what that means is like the best way that you can do it is this, let's say you farm a specific area, right? Go on social media, go to the search bar and go to places and put in that area that you farm, right? And then from there, there's going to be a whole bunch of top posts, on there, pick a few people and do the three, two, one method, which is like three pictures, comment on two pictures that you relate to, and then do a follow. You don't necessarily have to follow them, but if you do the three, two, one, the person is most likely going to go to your page to check you out. And that gives you the opportunity for someone to potentially follow you if they like your page, right? So do that method. If you're doing that every single day, you're going to see results and you're gonna see your page grow. Um, a tip for you though, when you are commenting, make sure that you don't just put one word or one emoji and then just call it a day. Cause that doesn't count. Use at least five words. That's what I, that's the rule that I go by because you need to leave genuine, meaningful comments to build real true relationships. Um, you're not going to build true relationships by one emoji. Okay. So stop doing that and start meaning, leaving meaningful comments and you're going to see a huge difference. Now, the daily operations to get results. 
So this is really important. A lot of you are probably asking, what do I need to do on a daily basis? Just tell me what I need to do so that I know what I got to do. And so obviously, the more that you do, the faster and you're going to grow, right? But this is what I came up with as like a minimum if you want to see results, okay? So you want to post at least once per day on your platforms that you choose. On IG, uh, you want to use IG stories. On Facebook, use Facebook stories. And you want to be doing 10 to 20 times per day. I know it sounds like a lot, but you want to be doing that if that's what you want to do. If you want to grow on social media, do the, the, that many at least and show your face, like make it a, a conscious decision to at least once a day, show your face on stories. Okay. Cause they need to be seeing you constantly. It makes a huge, huge difference. Um, YouTube and podcasts. I would post once a week, a really cool hack for you guys to save some time is Film an interview for YouTube channel, for example, and then remove that audio and then you can use that audio for your podcast. So it's kind of like a two in one situation. So it saves you a ton and ton of time. Um, make sure that you reply to all your comments and DMs. That's a minimum and engage with your current followers for half the time and then your potential prospects for the other half of the time. If you're spending 30 minutes a day on engagement, which is what I recommend, at least 30 minutes a day. Um, and again, if you're looking for potential clients, do what I told you, go to the search bar, search your area, go to five to 10 posts, the top posts and do the three, two, one method. And you'll start seeing some results over time for sure. And then, um, a really cool tip. This is what I learned from a few people who, um, like social media gurus. I, I study this a lot. And so this guy had like 7 million followers and, he was saying like overall, you know, this time, the best times that he found to post was Sundays afternoons. So just make sure you guys are posting on that day because that day gets a lot, a lot of engagement. Um, and he actually said the worst days were Friday evenings, I guess, because like it's the weekend and, you know, people are excited. They're not really on social media, but Sunday afternoons is a great day. And he was just saying in general, any time around noon is a good time. So just a little tip for you guys on uh, good times to post. So now I'm actually gonna share with you guys what I'm gonna be doing. So this is, this is my DMO for 2021. I'm going all in with social media. I am planning to do a lot. And this is, you know, this is probably gonna seem like a lot to a lot of you. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna take up a lot of time, but I'm really dedicated to social media. And so for 2020 21, I'm going all in. And so the platforms I'm going to be on is IG, Facebook, and LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, and podcast. Uh, I'm going to be doing IG, Facebook lives. I'm planning to do it every single weekday morning, starting in January. TikToks, I'm going to be doing three a day. I'm going all in there because it's so much organic reach. I want to take advantage of that. IG and LinkedIn, I'm going to be doing one post per day. And then a reel, I'm going to do one reel a day. IG uh, stories and Facebook, I just put all day long. And then YouTube video and podcast one each per week. That will equal to two IGTVs per week and then reply to all my comments, DMs. And then I'm gonna use the 555 method, which is a little bit more aggressive. And what that is, is five hashtags um, on five posts and then leaving five, like me leaving co uh, comments with the five, minimum five words. So meaningful comments. Okay, so I'm going to be doing that on different platforms. Uh, once per month, I'm actually going to invest some money and spend some money on renting out a studio and getting professional content done. I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm planning to do because I understand the importance of having high quality content. And so I myself, I'm going to start doing that more. And I'm going to use Sundays as my day to kind of prepare for the week. So where I batch a lot of content, prepare for the week and that sort of thing. So I wanted to include this quote because I think it's so important because we're going into consistency now. So consistent actions will give you consistent results. It is super and super important if you want to see results that you are consistent. I noticed with my own page, whenever I stayed consistent is when I saw the most growth. Whenever I was like all over the place, nothing was happening, right? So it is super important. So here are some tips on being consistent. Um, so what I write here? Yeah. So I just said, you know, you're not going to grow or see results. If you're not consistent, you want to be doing the right things in the right order every day in your business. If you want to see it grow. So make sure that you put it into your schedule. Like I said, you want to at least schedule these two things, which is 30 minutes of focused 
you know, uh, content, I'm sorry, not content, 30 focus minutes a day for engagement. So engagement, like I said, is super important and you want to put at least 30 minutes a day. Schedule um, at least one content creation day per week and batch your content on that day. So those two things you should be scheduling and putting it into your schedule. Because as you know, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't happen, right? So make sure that you're putting it into your schedule so you're making sure that it happens. Um, prepare by planning out your content one month ahead of time, I think is also a good idea. On top of the weekly uh, things that you're doing every week, I would suggest at the end of every month, kind of know what you want to talk about for the previous month and then adjust as needed because you're probably going to have to adjust it. Um, a tip is set realistic result. Oh, sorry, hold on. Someone's trying to get in. All right, so my tip here is to set realistic targets for yourself. It's better if you, you know, do less, but you're consistent, then try to do so much and be all over the place. Like I said, you're not going to see results if you're one day you decided to do it, then for five days you don't, and then five days you decide to do it, and then one, two days you're not. It's better to do little and to do it every single time than not to do it at all. So make sure you do that. And if you don't have the time, if you truly, truly are so, so busy that you do not have the time for social media, honestly, I would suggest spending some money and actually hiring a VA to do these sort of things for you because it's that important. Like if you're not on social media today, you're not in business. So it is super, super, super important. Also, an idea that I had was get an accountability partner. And the best way to do that is let's say that you guys have your batch content day on Sundays, right? So meet on Sundays at the end of the day and show, you know, show each other what you guys had accomplished. Like, what did you guys do? Show the content that you did, show your plan and that sort of thing. And that's a great way for you guys to hold each other accountable to make sure that you guys are doing what you guys need to do. All right, so we are 36 minutes in. And uh, yeah, so that was good. I got in 30 minutes. I'm gonna go into the Q&A portion of this.